And I just thank God for each of you. I thank God for those who decided to come and share this day with us. We are uh, on the rise, even though COVID is trying to tamper us down again. But we thank God that today was able to happen. And I thank all of the presenters. I sat in all of the classes. I was blessed. I was inspired. And so I promise you, I've taken what you gave with me when I leave. It will not just stay in this building. Today, I want to talk about footsteps of faith. Footsteps of faith. As you look at your program, you see shoes on the flying. So I want to talk about what does walking by faith look like in real life? You know, we can talk about faith all we want to, but it's not until it hits in real life that it makes a difference. I want to share uh, some words from three men, two men that most of you probably would remember. I don't know, some of the books we used to have and remember. One is in the garden. In the hymn that I had, it was number 109. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I remember that from Louis County Jerry. Then walk with me, and that number was 503. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me all along my pilgrim journey. I want Jesus to walk with me in my trials, in my sorrow, in my struggles. I want Jesus to walk with me. Now, some of you probably sang these hymns in the church. You probably had your head held back and your eyes closed, and you received comfort. You received guidance. You, re you felt empowered. You had hope and you had heavenly promises because you were singing about Jesus walking with you or you walking with Jesus. But what about on those hard days? When you're not in the church with your head held back and your eyes closed, what about those days you actually feel like punching somebody? Let me give you a scenario of such a day. Miriam's telephone rings early in the morning before she gets out of bed. Her boss is calling her to tell her she needs to be work 30 minutes early. Because the big bosses are going to show up for an unscheduled inspection. And Miriam has to get up and get ready. And while she's rushing to get ready, she's in the bathroom and a knock comes on the door and it's her daughter. Frantically telling her, Mama, 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 come on, I got to be in school 30 minutes early. Because I've got to put up posters to run the homecoming home for the class president. And so here Miriam has to rush, 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 and she gets to uh, the spot not far from her daughter's school. And when she gets there, the traffic is backed up. And so she says, oh, oh, okay, I know what Miriam, my daughter tells her, she tells her daughter, get out of the car. You go ahead and walk to the school, it's not far from here, I know you're loaded down with your posters and all of that. And Miriam makes a new turn. And Bless you, Lord, she arrives at the appointed time that the boss told her to show up. But when she gets that office, it's dark. No boss. And as soon as she goes inside the door, her cell phone rings, and she hears her, boy, her boss's voice, and her boss is laughing in a strange way. And the boss says, uh, uh, Miriam. I heard I was so upset about the pending inspection that was coming up that I dreamed about it was going to happen today. But, it was just a dream. The bosses are not coming today. 
they are coming at the schedule time. Now, I just wonder, what do you think Mary, Miriam was thinking the rest of the day? Was she walking in the garden? to walk with me all along my Christian journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. How about you? How do you think you would have felt? How is your faith in real life on a day like this? When we run into situations that were unexpected, Things that tend to upset us. What were we, what would we be thinking all day long? I think let me tell you about steps. When we make footsteps, we are moving toward something. We are charting a course, a destiny, a direction. And sometimes those footsteps are not where we want to go, sometimes they're where other people want us to go. Sometimes despite even our poor planning, we have to retrace our steps. We have to walk backwards. Have you ever done that? You were headed somewhere and you had to back up, either physically or just mentally. Or sometimes we have to make a U-turn like Miriam had to make. Or sometimes we just have to start all over again. Ladies, that's real life. That's real life. However, walking through life without faith is a little more detailed. It's a little more complicated than what I just mentioned when we take those footsteps. And because God knew that we needed instructions, we needed inspiration, how to walk by faith in real life, he had called. Paul, the writer of many of the books of the New Testament, in fact, more than anybody else, he had called to tell us some things, to help us when we run up against the wall, when we have to back up, when we have to redirect, when we have to rethink our destiny because real life happens. And I certainly thank Paul for being inspired by God to write because I tell you Mary Whitfield often had to retrace her steps. I often have to back up. I often have to recalculate. And I've been especially doing that for the last about two months. We've been on a, and, and going through a, a one room renovation that has turned into almost a three month project. Oh yes. But guess what? I walked into this by faith. I had asked God 29 years ago to make this call. And over the years, we had, my husband and I talked to contractors, and over and over, we daydreamed and planned most of me. Because it didn't bother him that much. <laughs> and I kept thinking, can this be done? Should this be done? And finally, the words that God has spoken to my heart through the Holy Spirit years ago came back to me. And the words were, invest in the house. My Lord. Invest in the house. Because I was thinking about investment in the market and that kind of thing. And God said, that's okay, but I want you to invest in the house. And so through that faith in real life, through that faith, I was able to 
Use what Paul said. Now listen to this. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 3. Ephesians 4, verses 1, 2, and 3. He's talking to, he's writing to the Christians at Ephesus, the church at Ephesus, in Asia 9. I want you to get out there and walk. Better run on the road God called you to travel. I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands. I don't want any of you strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. And Mark that you do it with humility and discipline, not with fits and stars, but steadily pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love, alert at noticing differences, and quick at mending fences. And this is from the message translation. Think about Miriam. Think about Miriam. How her early morning experience could obtain her witness for Christ as she interacted with people the rest of that day. Could she have demonstrated love for her God? I hope so. But real life happens, right? It could have been that she was so angry, so upset that she missed breakfast, she didn't get her coffee, that she ran into difficulties that her daughter imposed upon her, that for the rest of the day, she was not walking by faith in real life. Oh, she sang those songs in church like we do. Oh, we're good. You, uh, people tell me they hear my voice in church and they don't even see me. I just have that kind of voice. Oh, yes. But what about when James Whitfield gets on my nerves? What about when things happen to me that I get upset with, especially those telemarketers? What about my faith in real life? Sometimes it's really shabby. I want to let you know sometimes it's not what it should be. But Paul helps me out. Listen to what Paul says here in Galatians chapter 5, verses 24 and 25, again from the message. Translation. Galatians chapter 5, 24 through 25. Since this is the life that we have chosen. We chose to be believers in Christ, right? Since this is the life that we have chosen, the life of the Spirit, let us make sure that we do not just hold on to an idea in our head or a sentiment in our hearts, but work out the implications in every deed of our lives. Let me get that clear. He said, don't walk around thinking scripture, liking scripture, and not doing scripture. Right. That's what that means. Yeah. Not thinking scripture, not loving scripture, and not doing scripture. He said, that means that we will not compare ourselves with each other as if we were better than another, or worse. Can you imagine Miriam talking about her no good boss? Her boss always making mistakes, always getting excited. Can you imagine how upset Miriam could have been the rest of the day? Think about this. There are scriptures in the Bible that tell us that we are not to think too highly of our Savior. If it had been me, child, I wouldn't have done that. I would have known not to call anybody until I got up and thought about it. If it had been me, I wouldn't have been that stupid. We are always comparing ourselves with somebody else. And sometimes we actually think others are better than we are. So if we are going to have footsteps of faith, Paul is telling us we have got to have an intentional mindset. I want you all to say that, intentional mindset. 
and intentional mindset. Now, now that I've given you some scriptures that we can focus on, I want us to just take a minute and think about the type of shoes you wear. Since we are talking about footsteps of faith, a walking by faith, let's talk about the kinds of shoes that we wear. They are our shoes. Our shoes are for comfort and ease, right? Then they are work shoes. They offer us a little bit firmer support and a style according to the job. Not everybody wears the same type of work shoes. Then there are exercise shoes that are more supportive and durable based on the intensity of the exercise. In case y'all don't know that, there are certain exercise shoes for certain exercises. So don't buy walking shoes for running. A lot of people that's going to the store and see them and they get by, you need to buy the right kind of exercise shoes for the exercise that you're doing. Then they have dress shoes and they give us a sense of fashion. You know, we come in here uh, a lot of times with our heels on and they have all kinds of decorations on them. There's a sense of fashion and using uh, there's a uh, higher heel. Many of you like me, I've got where I don't wear those kind of heels anymore. Then there are sandals, and sandals let more air into our feet, give us more ventilation. And one of the most secure and durable type of shoe is the hiking boot. The hiking boot has the greatest amount of support, and it's made out of heavy duty materials. Let me tell you where I'm going with this. Walking by faith has some similarities to the purpose of each type of shoe we wear. Walking by faith has some similarities to the purpose of each type of shoe we wear. When we depend on God, we experience confidence. When we walk by God through our, our day, it's as if we are walking in the garden. Even when things are not going right, we are refreshed by his love just knowing how much he loves us. And even though the world hates us, even though the world is against us, if we depend on God, it's just like walking around in our shoes. Then when we walk by faith, we need to wear shoes that are appropriate. For the responsibility. Remember, I said you wear a certain type of exercise for a certain type of exercise and a certain type of shoe for a certain type of job. We need to make sure that when we follow in the footsteps of Jesus to spread the gospel, that we have on the right kind of mental shoe. Now, let me tell you what that means. When we walk by faith and spread the gospel, we know that there's a tone that we need to use. Yeah. Some of us, we, we think we got to slap people about the side of the head when we tell them about Jesus Christ. We make Jesus Christ seem like a, a cop, a police officer, instead of stressing his love. We need to make sure that we understand it is not only the tone we use when we spread the gospel, it is also time. Sometimes it's not a good time to spread the gospel. But let me tell you what is always a good thing to do is to live it out before people. Those are the things we need to understand that we are walking in this Life as a believer in Christ, and we're making footsteps, whether those are physical footsteps or whether they are just internal footsteps. We have got to understand that we have to have the right disposition. Now remember this. Paul says to the Ephesians, and mark that you do it with humility and discipline. Not with bits and stars, but steadily pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love. How did you start off? Oh, well, I, I want to do so much for the Lord. I, I just, I, 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 I'm just so inspired to hear someone and you leave saying, Oh, I, I just want to pour myself out for the Lord. And I'm going to give 
give them more of our time and more of my uh, uh, discipline. I'm going to pray more and I'm going to meditate on the scripture and I'm going to be a blessing to somebody. And you get home and in real life happens. <laughs> Problems come up. Somebody makes you mad, especially at church. Don't let them make you mad at church now. You, you, you'll stop coming to church because somebody made you mad and somebody made you mad on the job and you keep going. I am not see any paycheck at the job, but I'm just saying. We have got to understand that when we are walking in the footsteps of Jesus, we are intentional. Intentional. We make a decision. If you don't write down anything else I say today, I want you to write this down. Decisions determine our destiny. Decisions determine our destiny. Once we make a decision and we follow through with it or we don't follow through with it, there are outcomes of where we will end up. And Paul says to them, yes, you notice when things don't go right, but you do everything you can to make them right. You notice when somebody hurts your feeling. You notice when somebody is offensive. But Paul says, in order to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, you've got to do everything you can to make it right. Your decision determines your destiny. Lady, realize it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. But we can demonstrate our faith by being compassionate, we can make a decision to be compassionate. We can make a decision to be consistent. And we can make a decision to hurry up and settle differences. We can be about God's business, about being compassionate, being consistent, and quick to settle differences. Actually, just like when we put on those dresses shoes, if we do those things, we will appear as a shining example before the world. God will dress us up. He will show people, this is my representative. And when we do that, hopefully, there will be people who are watching us. There will be people who are looking at us as an example. There will be people who will know that that is a child of God. I don't know if any of you have ever been anywhere where somebody you didn't know, you didn't even have a real conversation with, or maybe just a short conversation, and they said, I can tell that you are a child of God. I, I sense the aura that you are putting off because they saw something in you that indicated that you were walking by faith. That you loved God. That you had something about you that was worthy of being known. Here is something we have to remember. One of the most difficult times to walk by faith in real life is when we go through an emergency. Sickness, death, car crash, all kind of crazy stuff going on in the world. People hating you and don't even hardly know you. That's hard to do. To walk by faith when we are in emergency, when we are being stressed, when we are going through. And just like those hiking boots, those hiking boots that give us extra protection, just like that heavy duty material on those hiking boots, this is when God gives us endurance. He said, 
Ladies, before you leave today, I want you to promise yourself you're going to call for shoes. I want you to pull off shoes with self centeredness. Pull off shoes of divisiveness. Pull off shoes of idolatry. Look after other gods such as power and money, arrogance, and achievement. It's time to pull off shoes of indifference where we don't care about the needs of others. And if we want to demonstrate what Jesus Christ looks like in real life, guess what will happen? We are paid for pay for others to follow. We will pay a pair for others to follow. We'll walk through real life praying for guys. We'll walk through real life to the word of God in action. We'll walk through life paying heed to the Holy Spirit and what He's speaking to us. And what is the outcome? Because I talk about decision determines what? Destiny. destiny. A decision determines destiny. Let's take a look on the outcome. If we follow in the footsteps of Jesus through our faith in His death and resurrection, this is what we'll see. Hold on. <coughs> this is what you'll see. A long line of children, family members, co-workers, church members, and even strangers following you as you follow the example that Paul wrote into the Ephesians and to the Galatians. Do you see the people you influence? Look out behind you. Keep your eyes closed. Look at the people who follow you because you follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And you may open your eyes. And guess what you got now? All these people following your footsteps because you followed in the footsteps of Jesus. You heeded the word, first of all. Guess what you got behind you? Ladies, you got a spiritual parade. You got a spiritual parade. People who are following that great path to eternal life. A parade of people who know Jesus as their Savior. A parade of people who understand that faith can be used in real life. I end with this hymn. Walking with Jesus in his love life. With him as my daily guide. Satisfied fully, I journey on in the footsteps of a crucified. I'm walking in the light of Jesus' love. I'm walking in the light of Jesus' love. I peace and joy divine. For Jesus' love is mine. I'm walking in the light of his love. Walking, walking, walking in the light of Jesus' love. Ladies, do that in real life and get your spirit to pray. Be blessed. Thank you. 